I've added a DHCP server with a scope, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a failover. A failover will allow me to fail over to another server in case my main DHCP server is no longer working. So how do we do that? Well, I need to install the DHCP server role onto my other server. Now, my other server I can get to by either remoting into that server or just doing it directly from server manager on the server I'm on if you have Active Directory installed. So I'm going to choose to add other servers to manage. And the server is going to be the one you see here. And when I click Find Now, you can see the DC2 server, which I can go ahead and add. And then I can choose to go ahead and install a role into that other server. Now that server is currently restarting, so we'll go ahead and see that refresh work here in a minute. Now I can go into all servers and you can see that server is now showing up. And from my DC1, I can go into DC2 and I can choose to add roles and features right from there. So I'm going to install the DHCP role on this second server. And when it's done, I'll be able to make this a failover DHCP server that will take over in case my primary server fails for some reason or needs to be restarted, say, for Windows updates. Installation is now complete, so I can go back into DHCP Manager, and I can add my second server now as a failover. My next step is back in my DHCP Manager, and I want to right-click on the scope and choose to Configure Failover. And here it will give me a new wizard, and it shows my current subnet, which is the 21.0 network. And that's because you might have multiple different subnets. So now I want to add my partner server. Now the partner server, I can browse to it or just go ahead and type it in. I'll go ahead and do that here. Check names, click OK, and click OK. And now I can choose some additional information, such as the client lead time. I can change that to minutes if I'd like, and I think that's actually a smarter thing to do. So we'll choose five minutes. The mode can be load balance or hot standby. Load balance means that they're both going to be running at the same time, whereas hot standby means that DC2 will just be in standby mode until DC1 fails or gets rebooted. So let's go ahead and choose hot standby, but you can choose either one that you'd like. And where it says hot standby configuration role of partner, you can see standby. And then here we can see addresses reserved for standby server 5%. And that's how many IP addresses are going to be available for that second server in case you need it. I'll put in 10%, but you can choose whatever you'd like. Next, you can choose the switchover interval on how often it's going to switch back to the other server, or you can just leave that unchecked. Now, if I choose the mode for load balance, then that means they're both going to be active at the same time. And by default, it's going to do a load balance percentage of 50%. So each server is going to take a request from a DHCP client for sending those clients an IP address. This is the most popular way of doing things. So in this case, it's always going to have both servers hand out IP addresses as needed rather than waiting for the second server to fail. But you can choose either option. Now you do want to have a shared secret between the two, so you can go ahead and type one in. And that adds some additional security. Click Next and Finish. And it was successful, so I'll click Close. I'm going to add in my other server just to show that this was successful. Click OK. And now we should see this show up in the left-hand side of the screen. And there it is. Here's my second server. It chose it by IP address, but that's OK. I can go ahead and choose to authorize it. And when I refresh, you can see that it automatically started that second server's IPv4 scope. So now it's going to expand it, and there it is. Scope X is in both places. Adding in a second server with failover can definitely assist you in case you have a server failure or one of the servers needs to be restarted.